day 552 of the Trump administration, and we are still tracking continued fallout over the release of that taped conversation between then-candidate Donald Trump and his former lawyer and fixer, Michael Cohen. Again, we learned tonight the feds have over 100 more Cohen recordings. More on that in a moment. Back to last night's released recording. Here is a key portion where Trump and Cohen are apparently and matter-of-factly discussing buying the rights to the story from a former Playboy model who claims she had an affair with Trump in 2006. I need to open up a company for the transfer of all of that info regarding our friend David, you know, so that I'm going to do that right away. I've actually come up and I've spoken to me, and I've spoken to Alan Weisselberg about how to set the whole thing up uh, with so what are we gonna funding. That, uh, yes, um, and it's. All the stuff, all the stuff, because, you know, you never know where that company, you never know where he's going to be. Correct. So I'm, I'm all over that. And I spoke to Alan about it when it comes time for the financing, which will be... Listen, what financing? We'll have to pay you. So no, 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 no. I got... No, no, no. The audio was given to CNN by Michael Cohen's attorney, Lanny Davis. NBC News has authenticated the recording with Davis, but we don't know if the original recording has been edited at all. As we've reported, both sides dispute what's on the tape you just heard. Cohen's attorney says Trump brought up by paying in cash. President Trump's attorney, Rudy Giuliani, flatly says the president can be heard saying, don't pay with cash. According to the president's lawyers, the payment was never made. Earlier today, President Trump refused to answer questions about the recording at the White House. A boisterous day in the Oval Office, to be sure, but no more boisterous than many other days. That went on for about 30 more seconds. You just heard CNN reporter Caitlin Collins in that clip. She went on to ask the president a few more questions, mostly about Vladimir Putin. According to CNN, after the White House announced another event in the Rose Garden later in the day, Collins herself was asked to come to former Fox News executive Bill Shine's office in the West Wing. She was met by Shine, who is these days deputy chief of staff for communications in the White House, and by White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Collins said they told her she was disinvited from the Rose Garden event that was open to all press because the questions she asked earlier were inappropriate for the venue and that she was shouting. Condemnation of the move quickly poured in from members of the news media, the White House Correspondents Association. Even Fox News supported the CNN correspondent in this case. The White House released a statement today that read, quote, at the conclusion of a press event in the Oval Office, a reporter shouted questions and refused to leave despite repeatedly being asked to do so. Subsequently, our staff informed her she was not welcome to participate in the next event, but made clear that any other journalist from her network could attend. She said it didn't matter to her because she hadn't planned to be there anyway. To be clear, we support a free press and ask that everyone be respectful of the presidency and guests at the White House. Meanwhile, President Trump did respond to news of the Cohen recording being released this morning. He said on Twitter, what kind of a lawyer would tape a client so sad? Is this the first? Never heard of it before. Why was the tape so abruptly terminated, cut while I was presumably saying positive things? I hear there are other clients and many reporters that are taped. Can this be so? Too bad. Meanwhile, Michael Cohen's attorney said today his client is now committed to telling the truth. Michael Cohen has an answer to why he taped conversations, and I think he'll have to give that answer himself. I can't reveal that, but I will say that Michael Cohen has turned a corner in his life, and he's now dedicated to telling the truth to everyone, and we'll see what happens. Philip Rucker of The Washington Post reports tonight that the tape's release raises concerns in the White House that Cohen could spill secrets about Trump to the FBI. Quote, Cohen has felt wounded and abandoned by Trump, waiting for calls or even a signal of support that never came. 
Cohen got frustrated when Trump started talking about him in the past tense, panicked last month when he thought the president no longer cared about his plight, and became furious when Trump lawyer Rudolph W. Giuliani contradicted some of his accounts, according to his associates. In Cohen's gravest hour, as one associate described it, Trump was leaving him out in the wilderness. The result is open warfare between attorney and former client. With that, let's bring in our leadoff panel for a Wednesday night. Matt Apuzo, Pulitzer Prize-winning New York Times reporter. Cynthia Oxney is back with us, a former federal prosecutor and a veteran of the Civil Rights Division at the Justice Department. And the aforementioned Philip Rucker, Pulitzer Prize-winning White House bureau chief for The Washington Post. Uh, good evening to you all. Phil, I'd like to begin with you and your work tonight. You report that there are over 100 more uh, recordings that Cohen has made that have been seized by the feds, but that this one that we just heard was the longest and most substantive. What else can you add to the record tonight from your reporting? That's right, Brian. And many of the recordings that the feds have are actually of Michael Cohen taping, secretly taping conversations that he had with reporters, uh, with journalists during the Trump campaign and, and after Trump's election. Uh, there are a number of, conver of additional conversations between Cohen and Trump, uh, but sources are telling us that those conversations are not as substantive as the one that was released last night. Uh, that said, there is concern uh, inside the White House and, and more broadly in Trump's orbit about these recordings, and I think more importantly, about what Michael Cohen uh, may now feel compelled uh, to share with prosecutors uh, if he chooses. He's clearly decided to break uh, with President Trump with, by releasing this audio with the combative uh, statements that his attorney, Lanny Davis, has been making, and there's a lot of concern that he may want to uh, share what he knows uh, with federal prosecutors. Phil, uh, further, a lot of the recorded conversations are said to be with members of the news media. And it's further That's said right. about Cohen that he just would roll on his phone during conversations, kind of in lieu of note taking and as a matter of course. That's right. That's what Lanny Davis, his attorney, told us, that Cohen had a practice of recording conversations instead of taking notes. Uh, it sounds odd for a lawyer to do that, but he did. Uh, and he did it on his iPhone. He would keep hold of those audio files. And, uh, you know, Lanny Davis said he didn't intend to do anything uh, with those audio recordings other than to keep them as his own personal record. Uh, but that was the way he chose to, to keep his records when he was working as uh, Donald Trump's personal attorney. Matt Apuzo, I'd like to play for you Rudolph Giuliani with Sean Hannity tonight because Rudy hears the tape and views the transcript a different way. He's been talking about his experience listening to mobsters on tape. And while this conversation likely taped in Trump Tower and not the Ravenite Social Club is much clearer than a lot of law enforcement uh, mobster wires, let's listen to the former mayor of New York City. You got to listen to it four or five times, which is when I talked about mafia tapes, I wasn't talking about this being a mafia tape. I said, I'm an expert on tapes. I did 4,000 hours of men on tape saying, hey, Rocco, what are we going to do today? <laughs> oh, my God. So, <laughs> so we're going to put you in the next movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I wanted to put yeah. Donald Trump says, don't pay with cash. Interruption. Cohen. No, 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 no. I got it. Check. No, no, no. And then very, very suspiciously, he cuts the tape off because it's a very, very innocent, very solid explanation. So, Matt, there you have it. Your reaction. Well, I mean, so we listened to the tape uh, four or five times. And, you know, uh, I have not listened to as many uh, hours of of secretive mob recordings as Rudy Giuliani. <laughs> so I, I can't I can't really compare the two. But uh, but this is a case where, you know, Rudy Giuliani is saying, well, here, believe our transcript because you can't believe what you hear. And and this is the this is what we run into a little bit with uh, with both candidate Donald Trump and Donald Trump in the administration right now is they say things and then it turns out that those things are not true. And then reporters say, hey, but what about the other thing? And, 
They say, yeah, yeah, no, we're not going to talk about that. And so it's 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 a strategy that we've not seen in Washington ever really work before, because most press secretaries, most politicians realize that getting caught in the lie is like usually way worse than whatever it is you're being asked about. You know, so whether it's you know, the president's got a plan to fire the secretary of state or the president dictated a misleading statement in his son's name or there's a tape and it shows that the president knew that the National Enquirer had the rights to uh, this, you know, this uh, this story about an alleged affair. And every time they say they don't know anything about it or the story is false or, you know, it's fake news. And then time after time, it turns out it's real. And then they just say, move on. So, uh, you know, let's I will see what happens if they can enhance the tape, I guess. Well, let's turn to a former Fed. All right, Cynthia, nation turns its lonely eyes to you. Um, uh, short of hiring a skywriter, as I've said before, it appears Mr. Cohen <clears throat> is anxious uh, to work with the feds. Two questions for you. How does this tape being out there affect that bid? And secondly, what do you make of the tape? Well, I don't think it does Mr. Cohen any good to have released the tape. Uh, what we've seen over the last couple months is Cohen trying to get a pardon from Trump. He was sort of fishing for a pardon, and that went nowhere. And now he spent the last time with Lanny Davis kind of fishing for uh, uh, some kind of agreement or some kind of deal to flip, and, and so far they aren't biting. And the problem for him is prosecutors are control freaks, and we like to be in charge of our case, and we like to do it in the courtroom. We do not, as much as we love you, Brian, we do not like to do it on the 11th hour, and we do not like to do it on Good Morning America, and we do not like to do it on the Today Show. So it doesn't help, um, it doesn't help Cohen that Lanny Davis is on this media campaign and that they're releasing tapes. In fact, what he should do is be quiet, he should hire, um, he can hire Lanny Davis or he can hire somebody who else likes to be quiet and they should have private discussions with the attorney's office. I think it's a mistake and um, it almost makes me wonder because as much as he's fishing around for a deal and he can't seem to get one, if he angers them enough, he won't get one because they can just go ahead and prosecute him and deal with him down the road. And that's kind of what he's looking at if he doesn't start behaving uh, in, a, in, a, in a smarter way, in my opinion. And as far as the tape goes, whether it's cash or check, I don't think it makes a difference. The point is that um, uh, the president has lied about this. He was involved in the discussions. He knew what they were doing and that there's a real threat uh, here for conspiracy to violate campaign finance laws to the president of the United States. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.